Hello, friends, new and old, and welcome to Read Aloud with Taya and Casey, where we will read amazing books and learn fun and awesome activities. We're happy you are here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Hey, everyone. Hey, Taya. How, How are, are you, you doing, doing Casey? Today? I'm good. Yeah, me yeah. too. I'm, right. I'm outside. It's like 70, upper 70 degrees right now. Ooh. Probably shouldn't. You can't see it, but I'm I'm wearing <laughs> jeans, which is making me a little extra hot. But feels good to be outside and in the nice warm weather. Yeah. What about um, you? I we went exploring yesterday. I definitely got a little bit sunburned. Ooh. Um. Yeah. I've got I've got really light light skin and a lot of freckles, so I end up uh, burning pretty easily. But I wear sunscreen to help. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to forget that that's an important thing that you need to remember when you're going to play outside is it's like every 45 minutes or so you're going to need to check and be like, hey, I need some more sunscreen. Take care of that skin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's real. Yeah, I like this. Which is kind of a hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge to something about kind of what we're reading today yeah should we the at the same time hold up our book that we're reading today yes i have One, mine ready two three ah! <laughs> I, um, I feel like this is a, a small victory when we can both have the same book physically in our hands oh yeah big time yes um good so job team like we just said we are going to be reading bartholomew and the oobleck written by dr seuss and in that same thing we've always talked about, if the illustrator's name is not on the cover, that means that the author also illustrated it. So this is written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. And so we're going to read this book. And I bet you, you could probably guess what we're going to be doing for our activity. But I bet you can't guess that we have split this book up into two parts because it's kind of long, which means we have not one, but two activities for Bartholomew and yes. the Oobleck. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Fun, fun. I know. This is like win-win. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. And we're going to be doing some, it's going to be some science. We're going to be doing some science. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, since this is kind of a longer book, I, you know, as much as I love taking big, long breaks to discuss things that are happening in the book, I feel like this is one we just got to buckle down. Oh, yeah. And if we have a really important, but then yeah totally let's take a break and 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 take that apart and unpack it and then repack it and jump back into the book you know Casey I was so, thinking the exact same thing cool did yeah. you sense that like I sent it through my communicator yeah to your brain exactly I got it received <laughs> unscrambled written read now put into action I um, just want to point out, I'm looking at the at the book here. The first thing it says, 1949. Yeah, trademarked. Trademarked. And copywritten in 1949. Yeah. So, and this is one of his earlier books. And it's just my quick math. That is 71 years ago that this book came out. So pretty crazy yeah when you look at some of the other dr seuss books check and see what the year is because then you can kind of see oh this came this came 20 years after ublik or this mm -hmm. came whenever so anyways okay and you could do some crazy math for some of our our five six-year-olds maybe even our fours maybe even our threes if you're feeling super yeah. wild um you, never know. you could see how many of your lifetimes you could fit inside of that book so oh, how man. many how many six year olds lifetimes could you fit inside of this book? Wow, it's easier when you're older. Yeah, I could do that in my brain really quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Too. <laughs> yes, I can. Um, do you want to read the first page, Taya, and I'll hold it up? Yeah, sounds great. All right, let's okay. get started. All right. Without further ado, Bartholomew and the Ublock. 
They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did as the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubbins. If he hadn't been, if it hadn't been for Bartholomew Cubbins, that king and that sky would have wrecked that little town. You're up. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before. But that year, when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubbins just didn't know what to make of it. Yet all that year, the old king did it. All year long, he stared up into the air uh, above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers, Hoof! The things that come down from my sky. All spring, when the rain came down, he growled at that. All summer, when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. All autumn, when the fog came down, he growled at that. In that winter, when the snow came down, he started shouting, this snow, that fog, this sunshine, this rain, bah, these four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin, Bartholomew tried to calm him, you've always had the same four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mighty tired of these old things. I want something new to come down. Something new to come down? Bartholomew gasped. That's impossible, your majesty. You just can't have it. Boy, don't you dare tell me what I cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am king. I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the land and you rule all the people. But even kings can't rule the sky. Can't, eh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it, but maybe I'm the one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubbins, I will have something new come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think up. And for many days, the old king stomped around trying to figure out some way to do it. Then, Finally, late one night, when all the lords and ladies of the palace were fast asleep, just as the king was buttoning his royal nightshirt, he suddenly popped, stopped still. A strange wild light began to shine in his gray, green eyes. Why, of course, he began laughing. They can do it for me. Bartholomew Cubbins, blow my secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your magicians, your majesty? Bartholomew shivered. Oh no, your majesty, don't call them. You hold your tongue, Bartholomew Cubbins. You do as I command you. Blow my secret whistle. Yes, sire, Bartholomew bowed. But your majesty, I still think that you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast down the king's back secret hallway. And a moment later, he heard the coming up from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber tower, came the magicians on their padded, shuffling feet. Up and right into the room, they came camping. Ooh, fire engines. <laughs> duffle, duffle, muzzle, muff. Vista, wista, mista, cuff. We are the men of groans and howls, mystic men who eat boiled owls. Tell us what you wish, O king, our magic can do anything. I wish, said the king, to make something fall from my skies that no other kingdom has ever had before. What can you do? What can you make? Mm. The only thing I can think of is trouble. Mm -hmm. For a moment, they stood thinking, blinking their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word. Ooblick. Ooblick asked the king, what will it look like? 
Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog, that's all we know. We just can't tell you anymore. We've never made Ooglick before. They bow, they stared toward the door. We go now to our secret cave on Mystic Mountain Nika Tave. There all night long, we'll work for you and you'll have Ooglick when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty, stop them. Stop them, not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'm the mightiest man that ever lived. Just think of it, tomorrow, I'm going to have Ooglick. It took Bartholomew a long time to get excited king to, the excited king to sleep that, that night. But there was no sleep for Bartholomew, the page boy. All night long, he stood in the king's window, staring out at the mystic mountain Nikatev. Somewhere up there, Bartholomew knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. Oh my goodness. All night, the magicians did. All night, they walked circles round their magic fire, making magic mumbling with their clucking tongues. Oh, snow and rain are not enough. Oh, we must make some brand new stuff. So feed the fire with wet mouse hair. Burn an onion, burn a chair. Burn a whisker from your chin and burn a long sour lizard skin. Burn yellow twigs and burn some rust and burn a stocking full of dust. Make magic smoke green thick and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is the smoke is now just right. So quick before the day gets light. Go magic smoke, go high, go high, go raise the kingdom sky. Go make Ooblack tumble down on every street and every town. Go make the wondrous Ooblack fall. Oh, bring down Ooblack on us all. Mm. Dawn was just breaking, and Bartholomew was, stand, was still standing, trembling, watching at the bedchamber window. But now, as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. Then suddenly, Bartholomew Cubbin stopped smiling. Was he seeing things? No, there was something strange up there in the sky. At first, it seemed like a little greenish cloud, just a wisp of greenish steam but it now was coming lower, closer, down toward the fields and farms and houses of the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost turrets of the palace. Tiny little greenish specks were shimmering in the air right over his head. Queer little greenish blobs just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hand. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about those blobs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, he shouted. Your oobleck is falling. The king sprang out of his royal bedsheets. My royal whiskers, it is. Oh, what a beautiful oobleck, and it's all mine, all mine. I don't like the looks of these blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down now as big as greenish peanuts. The bigger the better, laughed the king. Oh, what a day. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance at my glorious Ooblack. Out in that stuff? Asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe? Stop asking foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, you run to my royal bed tower. Wake my royal bell ringer. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew Cubbins didn't move. Run, barked the king. Bartholomew ran. <laughs> Across the sleeping, sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran. Then up the ladder of the high bell tower, he climbed the bell to the bell's ringer, the bell ringer's little cubby hole in the belfry. Ring your bell, he called. The, uh, His majesty, the king, proclaims today a holiday. The old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. The bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still nothing happened. Hey, what's wrong with my bell, he murmured. 
I'd better take a look outside. He poked his head out through the little trap door. I'm seeing some, some strange substance coming from the top of that bell rope. Oh, oh merciful great is being gulped. What is that? All over my bell like greenish molasses. Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried. Look at the poor robin down the street. She's stuck in her nest. She can't move her wing. That oobleck's gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. Oh, the bell ringer wrung his hands. If that green stuff picks up sticks up robins, it'll stick up people too. Someone's got to warn the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake them and warn them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter, he shouted. And he turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. To the trumpeter's tower raced Bartholomew, Bartholomew Cubbins and on up the steps, four stairs at a time. As he ran, he could hear the plop, plop of the oobleck on the window panes. It was pelting against the palace walls as big as greenish cupcakes now. He yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeter. He shoved his cold trumpet right into his sleepy hands. Get up, warn the people, blow the alarm. Alarm, yawned the trumpeter. Then his eyes saw the oobleck. Those green things, Bartholomew, where'd they come from? The king, panted Bartholomew. His royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeter leapt from his bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. He jabbed his trumpet out of the window. All blow, he shouted, the loudest alarm that's been ever been heard in the kingdom of Did. But all the royal trumpeter blew was A. <laughs> <laughs> my horn he gulped one of those green things flew inside of it he tried to blow it out he couldn't blow it out he tried to shake it out he couldn't shake it out i'll get it somehow he yelled i'll pull it out <gasps> no shouted bartholomew don't touch it the trumpeter's hand was already in it his fingers grabbed a hole of the lump of oobleck he could feel it squiggle round his fist like a slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all of his might. The oobleck began to stretch. Then, glong, the oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. It yanked his arm back with the back, back right up to the elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeter wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what'll I do? I don't know. And I hate to leave you stuck to your horn, but if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs raced Bartholomew Cubbins. And we are going to pause our story there so that we can do a little science. Oh, I'm excited. Me too. Um, so uh, we both have something that, uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you can find in your house, um, or you could grab some at the grocery store. Um, this is cornstarch. Cornstarch. And we're going to be making, um, uh, there's two kind of different types of oobleck that you can make. One of them most people call gack or slime. Or you can also make oobleck out of cornstarch and water. They're both very different consistencies, but they're also super fun to play yeah. with, super fun to experiment with. And they're also really cool to um, do some color mixing activities with. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a big fan. There's really, I mean, there's, I mean, we, we, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I'm a big fan of this because it's um, the cleanup of, of uh, this kind of oobleck is a lot better than the cleanup of GAC. You're kind of freezing a little bit, Casey. You there? You back? Yeah, I, 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 I
Um, ah, Zoom jokes. <laughs> Bazing. <laughs> um, yeah, I heard you talking about cleanup, and I agree. And I, to be honest, Taya, um, I'm not a big fan of, like, sand and flour and stuff like that. And this stuff doesn't, this stuff isn't one of those that bothers me. And same with GAC. Um, if any, any kid who went to the studio knows, like, I love making GAC all the time. Um, but so this is, this is one of those things that's just great to dive in and, and have fun with. Yeah. So, um, so what I've done is I've poured mine onto this pizza tray. Uh, um, and I've made kind of a little bit of a, a little kind of volcano dip. Oh, mine. so should I do that too? And I have a bowl, kind of a, yeah. a wide, should I just dump mine? I, I don't have a whole lot left. Maybe have like half a cup. Yeah, I'm I would just, just gonna, dump so it I'll, I'll do the same thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to really slowly, so this, this is a, a cup, one cup, and it's about halfway filled with water. And I, will, I won't be using all of this, but I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. And I'm going to use my hands, my fingers, to mix in, um, to mix in my water. And if you could see, um, I'll lift this up. So I'm going to use my fingertip just to mix in my water into my cornstarch. What's, Taya, what's the name of the mountain that the wizards all go to in, in this book? Oh, goodness. I don't, I can't you know? remember. I was just thinking about, like, this could be the Mount Kanika Tay or something like that. Yeah. So I just have a little kind of puddle of water, and I'm just mixing in. Nika Tay. Yeah, I'm so stirring in Nika Tay, the mountain. Nikite. Maybe we're, maybe we'll like get all these wizards wet so they think about what they've done. <laughs> you know, flood them out of their out of their layer of sorcery. So then you just mix it with your finger. Yep, and just keep adding a little bit of water at a time, just a little bit. If you have like a um, a water dropper, you can also use that. Mm. Mine's mine's kind of hardened. It's yeah, like sticking to my. Is that supposed to do that to you? Yeah, so you want to keep adding a little bit of water. If it's if it's pretty stiff, you want to keep adding water to it. Okay. I couldn't imagine finding like this inside of a trumpet. Yeah. Because this is just one, it's like one big clump. It's not even. So here we go, I'm starting to get oh, my Oh my gosh, clock. it just fell apart too. I haven't used, to be honest, Taya, I haven't played with Ublik in a long time. Oh, so I kind of forget. For free. Yeah. So, Ublik, if I am, uh, if I can remember this, and I'm actually going to look this up right now because I don't want to give the wrong. Um, uh, I don't want, I want to give the right definition. Um, So how's your oobleck mixing? It's looking pretty good because like I have to squeeze it, but then it turns to it turns to liquid in my hands. It's really thick. I'm glad I didn't add any more. But I could, when I drag my fingers across the bottom of the bowl, I can see little lines where I can see the bowl on the bottom of the bowl. But then is this like a good consistency, Taya? Um, let is, me that too, is that too watery? Um, you should be able to kind of, uh, you should be able to, if you, if you were to slide your finger across it, so I'll try and show this, I'm going to slide my finger across it, and when I do that, it stiffens. And then when I stop moving, um, when I stop moving my hand, it becomes a, a liquid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mine's kind of doing that. I'm glad that you have it in your pizza tray because you can really see the difference. You know what I just realized though, Taya, is yeah, like you have that the 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 color of the tin to show, but I because it's you know white on a white bowl. I got this marker, and I hope my niece is okay with using this. Maybe use like an old marker, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. 
It washes off it's pretty a, easily too from a marker. Oh, it does. Point. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, it's, I'm looking. It's not even like sticking to the tip very much. I'm just doing some dabs around here. Oh, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm gonna make a pattern. Oh, and I'm gonna grab more colors. I'm gonna do blue. Um, so this is called a non-Newtonian fluid. So like Newton's law, object in motion stays in motion. Well, so for this, um, there's something uh, there's something weird about the the chemical bonds that make up oobleck that when you're moving it quickly um it tends to thicken up and harden but when you stop moving it softens and flows which is kind of a tim. weird anti um check this out Taya. yeah this goes back to that like when it's fast so i'm kind of going fast and it doesn't make a mark and i pull away but then Cool. I can make these cool lines. So for, for mine, I oh, actually brought, cool. let's see if I can angle this down here. Cool. For mine, I actually brought this, um, these birthday sprinkles because I wanted to see what it would look like if I added a whole bunch of different color. Cool. And the candy coating on the birthday sprinkles will start to come off. And what I should be left with is some whirly and swirly rainbow colors. Which I can't like see yours color. very well. Is it, is it starting to do that, Taya? Uh-huh. Oh, cool. So I've just been kind of letting mine sit and it's kind of stretched, but then when I move, you can see when I move it. Can oh, you guys that's see super my... cool. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna mix mine together. I'm wondering what color it's gonna make. Oh yeah, maybe we could do, um, because we're talking science here, we could all make a hypothesis, a scientific guess about what's going to happen to the color of our oobleck when we've added all of our colors to the rain, uh, colors of the rainbow to it. Yeah. Do you have a hypothesis, Taya? I think for mine, um, because I know that uh, I, normally I would say kind of like a brownish color, but I didn't add too much color. So I'm going to say maybe like a, like a purpley brown. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that I did is because I noticed that when I pushed down all the way to the bottom and moved mm -hmm. it around, it turns to liquid. But if I just kind of touch the surface and scratch it a little bit and drag my finger across just the surface, it doesn't break the surface yeah and I can kind of drag the color I can stretch the colors a little bit but when I put my finger all the way in and drag it around it starts to get a little wavy gravy but yeah I'm wondering I think mine's gonna be a rather bright color I think I'm trying to think of how the color wheel works and if these are like complementary colors, ooh, I think I might, get, starting to see that it's, I'm gonna change my hypothesis now. I think it's gonna be more like a periwinkle blue. What color are you starting to see, Taya? Um, I'm starting to see kind of like a, it's like a grayish purple. And I would say we're almost pretty much all mixed in here. So for what, from what I'm reading, this is a dilatant or shear thickening non-Newtonian fluid, which wow. means that the viscosity or the the texture, um, the the way that it feels, it increases. It gets thicker with increased stress. So that means that the more and more, or the, the harder that I approach playing with my oobleck, 
the um, the more rigid it becomes, the harder it becomes. So if I try and really swipe up my ooh black, you can kind of see how it turns into ooh, like oh, yeah. kind of chunks. But then when I stop, it just melts, melts away. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. As soon as you started saying that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to start just grabbing this really hard. I'm going <laughs> to let it gather in one big puddle at the bottom so I can have a really get in here. I'm just going to grab it really hard. And then now it's, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And yeah, you so can experiment, you can experiment by adding more um, cornstarch to it too and seeing, because you can sometimes make it, um, like thick enough that you can hold a, a like a, a wad of it in your hand for a second oh. or two before it starts to melt, which is kind of fun. Yeah. And then my favorite part is actually how easy this is to clean. This is fun, but I like the, the cleaning of this is fun too, because you can watch how it disintegrates in your hands and kind of returns. Um, it dilutes or it uh, breaks down in water really quickly. Mm-hmm. So I actually have my measuring cup here. And if I just rub my fingers in my measuring cup, my hands are all clean. Oh yeah. I yeah. just have this little this little guy. Well, maybe I can dip a finger in it, but <laughs> I'm gonna go bring my science experiment to my sink. All right. This is uh this is pretty fun, guys. This is something that you I can just like sit here and just do. It's like uh -huh. it's like thinking putty or yeah, it's oh, fun. Yeah. Now, since I don't have any extra cornstarch, I can't play with that like the level of viscosity, but I can. I'm just gonna dump the rest. It's about three tablespoons of water. I'm Ooh, just gonna okay. dump all of it in there. I'm gonna see what happens. That's kind of the fun thing about science experiments, right? You can sort of change them up. Mm. Yeah, see now when I'm running my fingers around the bowl, mm. it's all the same. It's all, all the clumps are gone. Mm -hmm. And I felt the, the, the clumps of oobleck just kind of disappear into the water and just the water itself just got a little thicker. Did your hypothesis of color match your result of what you got? Yeah, I said, I mean, like periwinkle blue? I don't know. I have sunglasses on too. Yeah. But I mean, I could add, if I had done more of one color, I mean, if, it, if I hadn't added all this water, I could probably put more purple in and change, change the, the, the color, darken it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Did yours turn out? You said you're kind of like a purplish brown. Yeah, yeah. It was a little bit more, more a little bit more white gray than I expected, but held up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, fun. That was super fun. Yeah. Well, can't wait to find out what happens to this town that has this non-Newtonian fluid raining down. <laughs> gunking up trumpets and bells and who knows what else and birds nests and birds nests we yeah all right all right well, that's Should our continued yeah that's our read aloud for today tune in next time for part two of bartholomew and the oobleck part two yeah. <laughs> bye friends all right we'll see you guys later bye taya Bye, Casey.